Dr. Wood, author of the book, Miracles in Minutes. <laughs> this, I'm going to continue with my three brain series, triune brain. We have three brains. You have a reptilian brain, mammal brain, a human brain. And I'm, I, I, go, I keep going over this because it helps people understand <coughs> your physical health, emotional health, and also relational health and financial health. Like if you don't use your brain properly, I don't think it's going to work out too well for us. So <clears throat> I'm going to cover a little bit about relationships, particularly marriage and even like parents, but mainly, um, you know, marriages and stuff like that. So 50% of relationships end in divorce, you know, marriages. And then probably another 40% are un unhappily ever after. <laughs> you know, what, what, kind of, what kind of life is that? Uh, you, some, some people today grew up in uh, families where the parents had a dysfunctional relationship. They couldn't work through problems. Um, there was conflict avoidant. Uh, we live in a cult. Western culture is conflict avoidant, you know, peace at all costs. There's usually a giver and there's a taker. There's a people pleaser and there's someone who could be a little bit narcissistic and selfish. And uh, it seems like it works until it doesn't work. And then a lot of people just, you know, that's how they live and then they die. So uh, think about uh, 10, 10 marriages, you know, or 10 relationships, you know, 10 friends of yours. And then how many of those people have, wow, <laughs> I wish I had what they had. I want what they're having. And, and most people's relationships are, you know, kind of shitty, <laughs> you know, and just, you know, not, you know, it just ain't going to make it. So, and, and then people get discouraged. And so then today the marriage rate has dropped. There's a lot of reasons for going into that. I'm going to cover that in this video. But basically, let's, let's just get into what, what does it take for a relationship to work? So first of all, you're not born loving. Uh, you're, you, if you think that's true, you know, kids have a lot of uh, happiness and joy but you got to teach kids not to put their finger in an electric socket. Don't don't run out in front of traffic, and uh, you got to teach kids how to share because kids don't like to share their toys. Mine, 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 and a lot of people grow up and they still have that mine, mine, <laughs> and they get in a relationship and they what they get into is something called fake love or codependency and enmeshment, where the their partner is becomes their possession. Some parents parent that way. You think you own your children? They're not yours. Um, you may have a lot of feelings for them. You may love them to death but you may be strangling them and you're not allowing them room to grow because love liberates. I think Maya Angelou said that love liberates, which means it sets someone's free. If you truly love somebody, you want, you want the best for them, whether you're there or not. So it's not about being possessive. It's like, I just love you so much that I think the best thing for me to do is leave or set you free <coughs> because I love you match. I, I, I would love to be with you, but it may work. It may not. What's really great is if you're in a loving relationship and it's not I not I love you because I need you. It's um, I, I need you because I love you. In other words, I want you. I don't need anything from you. Um, and this gets into responsibility. So what most people have is their... So number one red flag about relationships is someone's not responsible. So this is the neocortex. This responds. These lower two brains react. This is fear. This is pride. So when you're in a fearful state, you're in the reaction part of the brain. It likes to cling. <laughs> you ever have a person who's a clinger? <laughs> Where are you? What are you talking to? <laughs> you know, stage nine clinger over here. They won't let go of you. They own you. They become super jealous. They become very controlling. The relationship becomes power and control. Who has control because they're terrified and they need you to pay their bills, make them happy. They need you to love them. And you, they, you're, you're their source of validation, all that stuff. That's, that's too heavy. And that's, that's, that's irresponsible. And that causes something called unrealistic expectations and expect this puppy to fail because it doesn't work like that. That's why codependency always ends in resentment. It's a parasitic relationship. I'll take care of you, take care of me. I'll eat off of you, you eat off of me. Feed off each other. And uh, it's consuming. And in the end, there's not much left of everybody because uh, you keep biting into somebody <laughs> to get your needs met for happiness. It starts to become very domineering, uh, possessive, and, and then it reads the resentment. There's going to be passive aggressive behavior, fear, pride, passive aggressive. What we don't have is responsibility. No one's responding, and people's let their egos get in the way of having love. So the saying goes to get the love, you have to get past your fear, and to stay in love, you have to get, give up your pride. So that's, to get to this part, that's I take responsibility for my life. And I, I am the only thing you're responsible for in life. It's a circle of 
uh, boundaries, healthy boundaries. And this, this makes everything easier with your parent or in an intimate relationship or business partner. The only thing I'm ever responsible for is my thoughts, my feelings, my actions, my behaviors, because that's the only thing I can control. I, you cannot control somebody else. You can't even control a two-year-old. Go brush your teeth. Get in bed. Like, they, they just choose to do it unless you use brute force. You know, and that, that's what you could do that with children, but you can't do that with adults. So you have to use persuasion. You have to use, you know, value propositions, like why it's valuable and help people see value, hidden value they can't see of why they might want to help themselves. But when it comes to intimate relationships, a person needs to be, have their shit together. And, 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 and it doesn't mean they need to be perfect. It just needs, you need to be responsible and you're mature enough that um, I realize that I do make mistakes. So they're open, open to learn. So it's not going to work if someone's not open to learn. So um, I, I dated a few girls like that, and I won't talk about my marriage, but, you know, I dated one girl, and, 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 and women today just expect that uh, I'm going to be your source of happiness, I'm going to be your source of security. Like, that's bullshit. Like, I can't do that because I can't think for you. I can't jump in your head and, and change your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, and your feelings. See, thoughts cause feelings, and feelings cause thoughts. So if you keep thinking I'm going to leave you, that's going to make you have anxiety. You're going to get a fear response. You're going to attack me or you're going to become possessive. Like I, I can't control that part. That's your insecurity. So that I can't be your security. And this is, this is causes extreme jealousy and rage and bitterness, all very unhealthy. And, and this is what I see today. So and, until, so to, to have, uh, um, how do you know, vet a man or a woman well, there's a, the book called The Tactical Guide for Women by uh, Sean T, but it's, it's the same thing. He's a psychologist, but uh, you have to have clarity. Everybody needs to have a goal. And I, this one girl I was dating, like, you know, she's trying to make me her goal in life. I don't want to be the center of your life. Too much. It's too heavy. I like the fact you're very affectionate towards me, but I don't want to be the center of your life. What is it that, may, that you care about? Like, do you care about kids? What do you want to do? What makes you come alive? What's your purpose? God, God didn't send you here just to have, just, you know, just to get married and have kids. There's more to it than that. Like you need a purpose. And I told my middle daughter last night, you know, choosing your job is pretty important. 70% of your life is the work that you do. So hopefully you choose something that you like to do or you love to do. Do what you love, love what you do. Then the other big important decision you're going to make in life is who you pick as a partner, as a boyfriend, girlfriend, or companion, or wife, or husband. You know, what do you need? The person needs to have clarity. They need to know what they want in life because like most relationship problems are something when people don't have goals and they don't know what they want and, and they just start getting, they create drama. Just like a border collie. If, if you don't run the border collie outside and keep it locked up inside in your house, come home and the holes in the carpet and, and the pillows are all chewed up and shit everywhere because the border collie has energy and it needs to go somewhere. It needs to go into creating a life for yourself. So if you don't, someone's not, doesn't have a goals, and doesn't have clarity of what they want, what's important to them. They don't know who they are. Who am I supposed? Who am I, who am I loving over here? You don't even know who you are. So this is all. This is all charade, and this is a problem. So a lot of people go like a lot of girls are like serial daters. They go from one relationship to the next relationship to the next relationship. Some guys do too, and that's just like that. that this is dysfunctional. This is fucked up shit. It's not going to work. Uh, get out of that one. <laughs> so they need clarity. They need stability, emotional stability. We all have emotions. You just need to be responsible for your emotions, not you, 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 you. <laughs> that doesn't work. It's it's I. It's called assertive communication. I think, I feel, I want, I need. Or there's another book out there called Nonviolent Communication, NVC by Marshall Rosenberg, and I think that's a great book. But to do nonviolent communication, you have to have self-awareness, become alive, what's inside of you, know what your feelings are become familiar with your feelings and then put that into words and express it to somebody else. So this, this requires skills and without it, you're not going to get to an intimate loving relationship because instead of you talking things out, you act them out. So the saying goes where there's silence, there's violence. Passive aggressive behavior is violent behavior. It's aggression and you're going to see <coughs> destruction, whether it's physical aggression or whether it's emotional aggression. Men tend to be more physically aggressive Women tend to be more uh, emotionally aggressive, and most guys don't see it. So emotional stability is one of the things. If you don't, you pick the wrong woman, she could be the best thing in your life. She could be a blessing, or she could be a curse. And uh, you know, 
if you get a bad woman, she'll ruin your life. You, you go to divorce court, you'll find out. <laughs> lose half your stuff, let, lose your kids. She'll be pissed off. She'll just all she cares about is revenge and getting even and hurting you and taking your kids away and parental alienation. You can't see your kids. All that stuff. Very, very common. And like all you do is divorce, join a divorce dad's group and hear all the guys complain that this is what women do. This is what dysfunctional women do. They'll hurt the kids to hurt the man. That's that's, that's abuse. And 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 they and they get away with it. So that's emotional stability. So this way you don't get an abusive relationship. And um, the last one's maturity. And maturity says, uh, I'm, a, I'm a human being, I'm a sinner, I make mistakes, and uh, I'm willing to own my mistakes because you can't learn unless you admit that you have to look at your mistakes and not take it personally. So if people don't take things personally and you can look at your mistakes, you can learn, you're gonna do pretty well in life. Dr. Wood, I hope this video helped you.